Happy Trekland HQ, and it is Tuesday. Are you seeing the best pictures from Picard, Star Trek? Today on Trekland Tuesdays Live, whew, with me, Dr. Trek, Larry Nemechek, <laughs> actually coming to you from the heart of Trekland through Portal 47 for some clarity, sanity, and the big picture in all things Star Trek. And yes, we are here. Uh, interesting topic to talk to everybody about, but hey, if you are new, if you have been very patient today, um, new or returning TTLer, uh, thank you so much for being with us and indulging us here. I've got some interesting things to throw at you, some fun stuff's been happening, uh, and we're also looking forward to. I'm going to do that. Uh, if you hang with me after this midway break we'll take for the live audience, I'll be back with uh, the chat and, yes, the Parrot Analytics numbers. If you're watching this later on YouTube, um, I wish you could join us live sometime, though. It's a lot more fun, and you have the community with us, too. But let's move along. Did I get to everything? I want to jump right in because, number one, here again, if you're on my news list, occasionally I run these surveys and polls as well as give you some news of things going on in Truckland. Um, we had another poll this last week about your attitudes about the coming of Picard Season 2. In fact, uh, well, it's got some interesting wrinkles. Uh, we had a lot of fun online this week. For one thing, I noticed that with the new pictures, April Grace, the actress, is playing an admiral. She's playing uh, an admiral that has a different last name than the character she played as an ensign for four or five episodes when she was the replacement ops and helm person. She played Chief Maggie Hubble, Hubble, Chief Hubble, Ensign Hubble, I should say, as um, named for the astronomer Hubble. And then she got the first name Maggie, finally, of all things, in the DS9 pilot. When she's when she's with Picard and then O'Brien as they're making their get offs their their transfers off the Enterprise D before they set up their scenes for the pilot of DS Nine. Anyway, she's um, uh, Maggie Hubble. There, uh, she's an admiral apparently coming to beg Picard to come back and go into active service, based on her handing him a com badge in the pictures. And yes, we're going to have some spoilers today because everybody's excited about Picard. There have been all kinds of wacky little trailers getting out, and that's what I want to talk about. The April Grace thing I pointed out, I guess I could have said, oh, look, April Grace is returning, playing a different character than she played in Next Generation when she was younger and lower ranked. But I didn't say that. I said, oh, what a missed chance. We could have had her with the same name as she was when she was younger. And I woke up a whole bunch of Twitter that I've never met before, which is awesome, who apparently follow me. And everyone said, married name, married name. Um, not hatefully, <laughs> just, you know, throwing it out there in the best fan discussion tradition. Nobody was snarky. But the point was, I knew that obviously she could, or she could have been married at the time and divorced if we're still going on patriarchal names. And we have seen everything from everybody taking the married person's name, alternate future or not. Yes, Captain Picard. It was a joke. It was, it was just for a joke, guys. In alternate future, married, then divorced, Captain Crusher, Picard Crusher. Uh, we've seen, yes, what was, wasn't Troy hyphenating in the Penthe in Picard? But we've also got all the stories of the Howard women over the generations, which we used to love puzzling over that. The fact is people are free. The women of the future are free to pursue whatever the hell naming convention they want to do once they're married or not, or whatever the social contract they're involved with, with a partner of any gender. I mean, you know, it's all of that. I was just amazed when I was just trying to point out that it would have been cool if she'd had the same name just to throw that in there. Just throw the dynamic of here. At one point, she had been like an ensign lieutenant to Captain Picard, and now they were more or less, depending on what grade of admiral and retiree and superintendent at the academy he is now, whatever, that they were basically peers. And what a great, on the surface, and for us in the 24th century, this young black woman, um, which is not supposed to mean anything in the future. As Uhura talked about the term negress, there's no need to apologize, Mr. Lincoln. We don't care about that now. 
They don't care about it now, but we do. And that's the weird dynamic. It's all fine. <laughs> but on, for us, it would have been cool to say at one point she was an ensign lieutenant transporter chief position. Um, and now she's an admiral in command, not ops. But it was fun to see Twitter bust out with that. And it was fun to see a lot of Twitter folks that I don't really correspond or they've never bit on anything. Uh, people chiming in. And a couple of even wackier ideas than that, you know. But it wasn't supposed to be about the name for her position. It was just, I was just trying to point out that it was cool they had the same actress and what an obvious link it would have been to show that she had climbed the ladder to be Picard's equal or even superior. That's, that's all I was saying. But it's Twitter. It's only 180. And the bottom line was that it was all cool. It was all good. Everybody was just having fun. What's been most fun is watching these early photos come out. Um, and again, if you're popping in here on anything, Twitch, Facebook, or YouTube, I'll be addressing the chat later on after that break. And if you're on Facebook, you're only going to see the Facebook chat, right? But it's been fun to see photos popping up, those photos of the Admiral and Picard, the, yes, the new Stargazer, <laughs> the brand new ship Stargazer, modern ship, that uh, spoilers, spoilers, but this is out there. It's in the promo. If you don't want to hear any of this, you know, whatever. I always say I'm not just going to pile on and be same old, same old, but I've got some points to make from what we've been seeing. April, the actress, April Grace is one of them, um, and the interaction. But the people are gogging, you know, all the ship nerds, all the costume fiends, everybody is is geeking out over the, I keep wanting to say the La Serena. Everybody's geeking out over the Stargazer Bridge, the field, the teaser. Um, that's obviously at the end, the Borg Queen. No spoilers and worshing. She was announced as playing the Borg Queen ages ago. Uh, it's a pretty chilling little clip that's out when you find it. They've released two or three clips. There's one clip of all the main cast talking about there's a big gap. It may literally be two years. In fact, folks, it was two years ago that the show premiered. And that was after having this long gestation. I mean, it's been four going on five years since they started writing Picard season one. It's a different showrunner now. It's Terry Metalis, not Michael Chabon, uh, who's co-showrunning with Akiva Goldsman. So the tone of the show is different. And this tone, as you're seeing with the ship shots, as you're seeing with the costume shops, this feels like... I'm seeing the broad reaction. So many people are talking about how this just feels like Star Trek and it feels like Starfleet. In fact, if you freeze frame, I'm going to, I'm going to um, Instagram and maybe I shouldn't, maybe I should. Cause by the time I say this and then get it done, somebody else is going to beat me to it. There's one cool little homage of all things to the original series pilots in those stargazer scenes of, of impending crisis at security, red alert, a bleeding green Vulcan officer, which is cool. I mean, it's just feeling up and down and side to side like Star Trek, and people are commenting on that. So look for a little uh, dive bomb from me coming up later. But, yeah, um, it feels it feels like Star Trek. And here's the point of today. Of all these videos, all these trailers, all these pictures, are you looking at the best pictures? from Picard this week, because some might say the best images from Picard season two are the ones that Dave Blass, the new production designer, is putting out on his social channels. And that's nothing new. <laughs> Designers and creatives putting things out on their social channels has been teasingly fun and very sophisticated. We've come a long way, We've come a long way since the studio, don't show anything reaction at the beginning of Discovery five years ago. Poor Ted Sullivan had all of his nondescript green screens yanked just because there might be a clue there when there wasn't. <laughs> this is the underside of a Discovery platform. It was two before in plywood. It was hysterical, but it was apparently too revealing. Now, we've come a long way since those days, for those of you who watch the channels. Um, but good on Dave. Dave Blass, I've been watching. I met him when, when John E's put together that 25th anniversary of the first contact Zoom meeting that I herded the cats for. If you didn't catch it, it's on YouTube now. It's on my channel, Larry Nimichek. Please like and subscribe. 
Um, it's over there. But it was a pleasure having Dave along, who was not obviously working on First Contact in 1995 and 6. In fact, he said, I was a fan standing in line. But what it made it really cool and relevant was that he's now the production designer for season two and season three. They're shooting now. And season two, no secrets, has the Borg Queen, has some more Starfleet. There's been a time elapse if you catch the character video. There's been time elapse and... Um, the different characters have moved on. A lot of them have gone more back to straight arrow Starfleet. Raffi and Rios are back. And Picard. As I hate to say, they're, they're not saying superintendent of the academy. They're saying commandant of the academy, which sounds so militaristic. I wish they'd gone back to superintendent. But that ship sailed. Um, they used both. <laughs> but in the in, on canon screening. But they've gone back to... Um, which, you know, texture, not trivia, hashtag. It's the pendulum swing of real-life Starfleet in the 24th, 25th century. We're officially into 2501 because it's two years since the events of Picard season one, just as it's two years in real time. What I'm getting to here is Dave Blass told us that night of the 25th season. And he, if you're following his socials, and you should be, you should find all these creatives and follow their socials. Um. It's become increasingly a little-known secret that aside from the incredible incredible art team that he heads up as production designer, same title that Herman Zimmerman had, and Richard James, all the years of uh, TNG and Voyager, he's got a lot of very active professionals. Um, what he's done, though, is reach out because he's a fan, and he he laid that out pretty clear. In fact... Watch my socials. We're going to have a few highlights coming from that night, finally, now that Picard is out and things will make sense. But what he'd been kind of hinting at and talked about, and it was a little known secret to some of us, he busted wide open. Yes, the pictures you should be watching from Picard right now are on his personal Facebook and his personal Instagram. He's listed, and I say this all the time, but Portales know this especially. The credits you see off the end of a show, even today, even from the 60s, advanced to the 80s and 90s, and now even today when you get, you feel like you're getting the second assistant cameraman's craft services dog walker. Even today, there are tons and tons and tons of names that aren't at the end of the series, at the end of the credits. Uh, Dave Blass, just Dave Blass, was running them the other day. And there's five or six, and he gets into the prop department and the set dressing department and all of that. But gang, I'm telling you, you scan these names with, he's at the top. And there are so many names here, but your eye trips over a few. I'm looking at all, here's all these art directors. There's six art directors. Um, then you look at the assistant art directors, assistant art directors. Then you have concept illustrators. Oh, look, there's John Eaves. Now that's no secret. John's been talking. He's been designing off and on. He's been doing a lot of Marvel work. But whenever there's a new wrinkle going on with Starfleet and Star Trek, uh, he's been there. He's been in the fold. That's not the shock. What's the shock is... Uh, nope, these don't go. I'm looking down this list of concept illustrators. And, oh, my gosh, here's um, Darren Doctorman. Are you kidding me? Who You know, you may know most of all for working on the motion picture uh, director's edition in 1999 and today they're currently working on that yeah darren works all over the all over the industry uh he's in here oh look who else is a concept illustrator doug drexler how about that oh jim martin hmm i'm seeing you know oh look here's sean hargreaves who came to prominence um <laughs> thanks to a contest i mean this is amazing let's see Set designer, set designer. Now, Scott Schneider may not be a household name, but he's been working steadily as an old school insider since the first of Discovery, trying to keep the ship's interiors and exteriors matching. Sometimes it's been an uphill battle, but he's got he's got some reinforcements now. Got a whole new attitude. Everything comes from the top down. Uh, look who else is in this set designer mode here. Tim Earls, the great Tim Earls. Yep, yep, yep. Huh. Graphic designers? I'm looking at Dave Blass's list. Jeffrey Mandel? Mike Okuda? 
And a name that you won't know unless you're watching the movie TNG credits, Monica Fedrick, who was always in the graphics teams during the TNG movies. Uh, I you, Guys, some of this has been leaking out. Some of it's been drifting out. Some of us we knew a few months ago. But not to what extent. Oh, my God. And yes, with it, even with a credit from Cryptic Studios is Tom Marone, who didn't work on the TV. Young Thomas uh, has been part of Cryptic from the beginning. It's it's just kind of amazing. And, and then, yeah, here's set, here's set dressers, props. That's a different dynamic if you're being throwback to the earlier days. But you go to even the playback team, and the supervising engineer on playback is Ben Betts, who was with us in that uh, lost, in that first contact uh, panel. But Ben worked video with my, with Denise on all the series, especially Voyager, DS9 Voyager especially, and Enterprise. He's back in the video playback team here, engineering, keeping all the computers, you know, all the master computers going in the era that we have now. It's just, it's just kind of amazing. If I overlook a name here from the Berman era, I'm going to be disappointed. I think I'm getting them all though. I think we're getting everybody in here. But another one, Mr. Andrew Jarvis here from the Twisted Media Motion Graphics team, who was a guest on Portal 47. I hope to get a feature into the magazine about Andrew and all the 3D CGI and the 2D graphics. Some of the coolest stuff from the fan bringing it in the best Star Trek way as in-jokes. Everything from exhibits on display at the archives when Picard visits to, uh, yeah, to the whole 3D graphics of the La Serena. And a lot more. Uh, I'm glad to see Andrew is back and his whole Twisted Media team. And most of all, there's a credit here. Don't know if these are going to be on screen, though. And Elkar's graphic advisor, Mike Akuda. There you go. There you go. And then we've got pages and pages of the construction department. Uh, no, I, I'm not even going to look at these names. I'm doubting <laughs> that we're not going to have anybody from the 80s and 90s in construction. But it's amazing. Dave, if, if nothing else, Dave also makes the point here to give all these people and then the plaster foreman the, that do full, full, you know, do forms, sculpting. There might be random people here that worked in vendors off lot back in the day, the 80s and 90s. Uh, some of these folks are on here, irregardless of whether they're on studio payroll or they're from a vendor outside. But he's got all the grips and the greens and the floor covering people. And then at the end, um, yeah, at the end, some specialty folks here, Greg Aronowitz, uh, Sean Torgano, uh, Tarango again, um, special, special thanks for those folks. And, uh, and Neville Page, who's ostensibly costumer, co makeup, makeup, but whose design work overlaps when it needs to into set design, production design, as well as costume occasionally. Anyway, my point here is um, if you really want to get excited, if you think you're getting excited about the Picard feel and you're just wanting to know why, well, hey, it's Trekland. I'm going to I'm gonna sneak out a little piece of what we do with the Portales in Portal 47. We're going to dig a little deeper. We're going to deep dive, right? We're going we're gonna to get a little deeper. Go beyond the pictures. Figure out why you feel so excited Look at the names, look at the people, look at the behind the scenes, folks. And by golly, if you look at Dave Blass's account and find these white on blacks, I'll share them around. There's no need to repost them. You'll find a lot of names you know interspersed with a lot of modern people working at their craft. And most of all, the guy at the top of the list is the one who opened door and brought them back. And that should tell you all you need to know. It's been increasingly obvious to me since last summer and last fall when I started hearing about who was getting little projects to work on. A project, if it suited their time back from the Berman era, then they were being brought in because Picard season two was going to go there. Now, I know we're going to have alternate timelines and we're going to have LA production locals and all of that kind of thing too, which you got to know what the mold was before you break it, right? But all props and all credit there to uh, today. Blast to all the bosses up and down the line that uh, that 
probably didn't care that he did this and probably were secretly glad that he did. And you know what? Terry Metalis is the co-showrunner this year, and he's just as much an original series fan. Terry, who labored in the trenches for ages as Brannon's assistant and then started writing in the best way, used that as his springboard like other writers have done. Um, it's not just about answering the phone, and you put up with a lot <laughs> when you're somebody's monkey boy. But then to wind up creating and show running 12 monkeys for years as a series. So yeah, Terry's got his uh, bite on and I'm sure that and you've enjoyed his social accounts where he's teasing cute little bits because he knows what fans are going to want to see. And you know what? It's not spoiling a damn thing. We've come a long way in five years. This is why we look at the example of the Berman era. We look at the micro, we look at, we look at discovery and then you look out of the gate, you look what the Hagemans and their team did with Prodigy, and we all know what Mike McMahon's doing over at Lower Decks. This is why Star Trek is not static. This is why every incarnation grows. We love to talk about the third season, or in some cases, maybe with 10 episode seasons, maybe the third episode. <laughs> but we love to talk about this, and it's amazing. So if you're watching Picard, and you know what? You might not like the story, but... It's obvious that right now the world is feeling oozy and gooey and warm, all tingly inside, looking at these images coming out. Um, and the best pictures, the best pictures to explain all that might just be from Dave Blass's account. Now, one more thing today to pile on this pre-Picard hoopla. The, um, the virtual premiere is tomorrow afternoon. The show over uh, premieres technically midnight Thursday. I mean, yeah. Uh, the rest of the world on Prime supposedly is going to get it on Friday. And this week, for three more weeks, we're overlapping with the end of Discovery, which was a whole really weird new weird thing. The first time we've had overlapping shows really going at it since, yeah, since the late 90s. But um, I'm sure we'll handle it. I'm sure we'll handle it. In fact, I've been curious to see and you would almost expect this because Picard's getting the hoopla premiere bump, right? In popularity, in buzz. We take a look at the parrots. Maybe we'll see if there's any numbers to back that up. But for right now, it's totally a human reaction. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. But I was curious about this, among other things. So, yeah, if you're on my list, you got to do <laughs> a little quickie poll. I wanted to share it with you because I basically said... What are your plans for Picard debuting this week? What are your plans and your excitement level? So the options I gave everybody were, and I even broke this down. I said, I'm watching it before the Discovery episode. I'm watching it after the Discovery episode. Uh, nope, I'm still waiting. I'm waiting to get them all in a free week, but I'm watching. Other people, I am waiting but I'm waiting to buy hard disks because I'm not paying for streaming. Now, that's a position that's really softened in four or five years. Huh, the world's kind of caught up to everybody just getting used to this and making decisions. But a lot of folks <clears throat> still want to wait. They either need to or that's just their preference. And that's cool. That's cool. Um, I've got a, <laughs> I've got an, uh, an item here for... Um, I'd love to watch it, but there is no tech and way that I'm able to. Okay. Uh, then, of course, the folks who say, uh, I'm watching it with some help, and that could be a friend. That could be any number of sources. And then, of course, I've got one that, nope, nope, I have no interest, zero, zilch, none. So here's why that, it was pretty simple, right? Just six, seven options. So we had a pretty good, we had about a 5% return from my whole mail list, and it was very late. So this is actually a pretty hot turnout, and a lot of folks or clicking in today, not last night. It really was a 24-hour snap poll uh, on the email. You could go back and find it and still vote, and these tallies will tally up a little longer. But here's the thing. Coming from bottom to top, right? So I had one vote here for I'm watching it after... Oh, I'm taking that back. No, that's not true. Somehow I'm getting two batches. So the least, the fewest votes went to... This is 4.5%. Uh, of the turnout said either I wish I could, but I can't tech the tech with it. Okay. That was 4.5%. Another 4.5% said, nope, 
I'm going to wait till all 10 go by and I will grab it in a free week, if not a free month. Uh, okay. Of course, right after Picard will be Strange New Worlds, and then you'll just wait for those 10. And But that's their intention. They're going to wait and do it in a free week. Maybe they'll even bone up on everything coming out this year, which is a never-ending story, apparently. Um, that was 4.5, 4.5%. Then we've had... Um, yes. Then we've had another tie at 6.1%. Um, the folks who say they're waiting for the DVD blues, 6.0%, and watching it with some help, 6%. So there's 20% of the audience going down right there, okay? Um, am I really? Right, the next clump, and you would expect this, 9.1%, almost a tenth, say, not watching, I don't care for it. And boom, this is not scientific. But right there, if you've heard me talk since the 80s, I've called it the loud 10%. Now, they're not being annoying. They're just stating it here. So thank you. There's nothing wrong with critiquing. But there's the 10%. Okay, not amplified by bots and trolls, but stick that away. There's 30% down. The rest, the rest basically, 22% are saying they're watching it after the disco episode. Uh, excuse me, 24%. And yeah, the chunk. This was 50 last night, but it's gone down a little bit. 45.5% uh, say they are watching Picard right after it drops. They're watching Picard first before Discovery, which doesn't surprise me at all. Almost half of the fans on my list who bothered to answer, who were motivated, and that could have been people saying, I'm not going to watch it or it could have been any of these other answers, but half of those answering, replying, said they're watching it before Disco. Now, looky there. You add those two together, that's 67%, 68, saying they're watching it on the first day. We've got a couple of people delaying. We've got some regretfuls, and 10% who say don't care. Which, again, is not scientific, but I kind of, I kind of think this is kind of reflecting the reality of at least active fans. Active fans that I see live, that I see online. Um, yeah. Yeah. Now, it's sad because I remember two years ago, we had a big local live Picard premiere here locally. I mean, there was the premiere at the studio, which we went to, which was live. And then um, we had a club locals turnout in Burbank with a packed house. And two, two weeks later, boom, the lockdown hit. Now, you know, right now, we've got a whole boat full of Trek fans all out on the official Star Trek cruise. So I know they are bond voyaging just fine. You see the, you see the, you see the, pokes, the uh, photos being posted. Everybody having a good time. That's awesome. And I'm sure they're doing some special Picard and Discovery catch-up moments Thursday night, Wednesday night, Thursday. Uh, so they don't feel left out. I'm sure with the hoopla for Picard... They're doing something special on the boat. But uh, for everybody else going on, um, this feeling of the pandemic is hopefully finally starting to open up. Uh, people are going forward again with confidence. Well-meaning folks who want to do the right thing or just, you know, cover their ass, um, protect themselves. They're doing the right thing. So it's, it's an interesting time, right? It's an interesting time. I just wanted to jump on and say... Uh, if you're not following all these accounts and photos, you should be. Uh, if you're wondering why you feel so tickled, there's a good reason. Follow Dave Blass. And when you do that, you'll see all these other creatives pop up and you can follow them too if you're not already. But when you've got this uh, MVP list, the Hall of Fame here from the Berman era and before and after, uh, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome to see. That's the attitude. That's the policy, the vibe is set from the top down. That's how it works in any organization, much less a Star Trek, much less overall and much less in the art department. And if you're feeling good about it, <clears throat> there's probably a good reason why. And that's it. Oh, and yes, April Grace, <laughs> her Admiral could be, could be the same character as her lowly uh, ops junior officer. Uh, that's all cool. Um, yeah, 
Yeah. So keep on geeking out on the photos. It's only a couple days away. Our European friends will have it in three days. Keep watching. I'm sure there'll be more sneak peeks and trailers. People are kind of excited. And if we couple that with the excitement about, for God's sake, at long last, opening up smartly because that's where the data shows us, um, it could really, really be an awesome 2022. And we're not even to the impossibly high expectation bar of Strange New Worlds. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what that brings, okay? Hey, everybody, once again, thank you for being, uh, thanks for being patient there with me. Um, <clears throat> oh, crap. I did this. I did this in Firefox, didn't I? Yes, I did this in Firefox again. What's it going to take for me not to be distracted? Hang on, everybody. Hang on. Wow. 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 Okay. Well, well, I bet that's better. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. And we're obviously still recording, everybody. Thanks for your patience. I'm just <sighs> okie dokie. Okie dokie. And we're there, and I'm just thinking. Trying to figure why we're not having chat this time. Don't worry, we'll fix this in post. Well, there we go. I just, uh... huh. Not going to do that. All right. Yeah. Okay, well, everybody, I've lost uh, your chat. I thought it would pick up. I think in the overall recording, it's going to be great, but I'm not going to be able to retrace it. So what's sad is I'm not even getting chat over here. And boy, is this going to be an edit this week. Uh, why? 
when we did this before. You know what? We'll just stick here. We'll just stay. Sorry, I know this is the fuzzy, this is the uh, Firefox, um, but we're just going to stay and we're just going to do it and end it. Uh, yes. Yes. Did you like my, did you like the auditorium echo? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, everybody, apologies for today's show. I was so excited about this topic. What do we end the front end? It is what it is, everybody. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. And I also want to start off by thanking, yep, thanking our TTLers. Uh, Diana Hopkins, Robin Wilson, Lawrence Todd, Anne-Marie Siegel, Keith Rumbach, Justin Porteous, Nathaniel Robinson, and Blaze K. And then our live wires, Rusty Harrell, Halbeard, Gun Johnson, Jalen Bullock, Robert McLean, Alan Hohensey, J.R. Poole, Byron Bailey, Dave Gregory, and Casey Shafsky, and our newest Patreon, our newest Livewire, Gay Cleaver Lundstrom. Thank you, Gay, for joining in. Thanks, everybody, for being, being part of that. If you want to be a Patreon and maybe pay for a guy to stand here and hit me in the head so I remember to go to Chrome, it's 5 and $10 a month. Maybe I should have a higher level at patreon.com slash Trekland Live. And I thank you all. Seriously, thanks everybody for that. Hey, this week, The Trek Files is marching right along with an awesome guest. I don't often have fans on The Trek Files, but I needed a fan this week to talk about our documents. So yes, Fran Taylor of the Sci-Fi Sisters is with me. Fran has been around a lot of the, she's been around the block with fandom a long time. And uh, she's also representing, uh, you know, she's a woman of color. She's a black woman, and she's been around for ages. And we had a unique perspective to talk about this week's documents on the Trek Files. I hope you'll check it out. Everything is there at Facebook on the Trek Files. Uh, all the Roddenberry podcasts at podcast.roddenberry.com. And if you didn't hear the news, Life Support Live, Dr. Ali and Dr. Trek, we have three more weekly episodes. Yes, we're going to end the weekly, as we have known it so far, edition of Life Support Live, March 19th. It will be live. It will be part of Virtual TrekCon 3. And we are going to be, if, if everything goes according to plan, Ali and I will be together to bid goodbye to this aspect of Life Support Live. But the brand is around. We're going to do specials. We're going to do live con panels. We're going to have fun with it. The, the idea will not go away, but we're ending the live weekly podcast. For one thing, Ollie has a new little one on the way by May, and it's just going to be too much. <laughs> I totally get it. But we are keeping Life Support Live alive. So our lifers, um, well, we won't have the weekly visits, but uh, we're going to keep the group together and the Discord and the page and everything. So if you haven't, the next three weeks... Uh, are going to be the same except this weekend. We will be one day later and two hours later. This weekend will be at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, on Sunday the next day because of a jig-jag-jog in Ollie's schedule, okay? So we will be with you. Then we'll have another episode at our normal time, presumably, and then we'll have the finale as part of Virtual Trek Con 3, um, a two-hour special with Ollie and I, together. So uh, the, the lifers heard about all this on Saturday. So there's another, another live mission and everybody, um, Hey, we don't have these video issues on <laughs> Twitter. It's at Larry Mitchuk on Twitter, but yes, if you would subscribe on YouTube, it would be awesome. Uh, Facebook and Instagram. It's all the same too. Come over and jump in and portal 47.net. Uh, none of these other, this is the only time I have this unique hookup of situations where I have to remember to use Chrome. So we'll keep working on that. Uh, keep working on my brain. My alarm did not go off. It's been kind of a crazy time here, everybody. Uh, it's an exciting week. Sorry to be fuzzy for so many of you. Sorry for our hiccups today, but 
I really, really do appreciate everybody's support. I appreciate our community. I'm going to be right back in a minute and look at the chat with Firefox, apparently. And uh, then we'll look at the parrot and we'll look at the parrots first, as always. Okay. So, yes, if you're leaving us now on YouTube, please, please, please stay healthy, be well, do all the things. Uh, stay woke, check your sources. It's a crazy time out there. Um, know who you're talking to and where it's coming from, and then be open to the information if it's something that challenges your expectation. Okay. After you check sources. Most of all, <laughs> track well, everybody. Whew. <clears throat> All right. We'll see how that looks. Let's look at the parrots, though, now, everybody. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for hanging in there. I was trying to make a quick fix, and it's not going to work. And in my own defense, there's no excuse. But can I say that when your iPhone is stolen just before midnight, before a live show, and then you spend all the morning dealing with all the things you didn't know you had to deal with and going around in circles, uh, it can be a little upsetting. So my apologies if I have been a little off, delayed, and all down the line today. It's a pain. But we'll get there. We will get there. Uh, but yeah, the Parrot Analytics, you guys know, are the uh, is the way that ParrotAnalytics.com came up with. You can visit their site uh, to try to get a handle on the relative popularity of the streaming original digital shows. Um, we've been watching them since Discovery. They're about two, three years older than that, came out of New Zealand. And they're measuring countries around the world, up and down the line. They published their top ten, if you can find it. Uh, the U.S. is right there on their site at the Insights tab, but they have a, they're have scouring the Internet. They're just pulling up buzz, basically. It's a high level, a highly uh, mechanized way of looking at buzz from the studios, from critics, and mainly from fans and all the shares and reshares and memifying and everything. And this week of the digital originals, Mandalorian is back at number one, 41 time, point two times more popular than an average show in their scale. That's their baseline. Then followed by Stranger Things, which is up in the buzz again with their season coming. Boba Fett down a little bit. And then Peacemaker. I mean, people are seeing that even half of Boba Fett was Mandalorian, right? Uh, then Peacemaker, which I need to watch. Uh, Witcher, then Clone Wars, Ted Lasso, Titans, Cobra Kai. And 1883 had some buzz new. Ted Lasso is up because uh, they won SAG Awards, apparently. Apparently, and that's got the buzz going. Um then of the overalls, of the overall market, it's about the same number scale to starting at 65 uh, times popular than an average show. SpongeBob, Euphoria, Attack on Titan, South Park, Saturday Night Live, The Walking Dead, Game of Thrones, then Mandalorian and Stranger Things from the digitals, and then Simpsons. So just to market, number 10 of the digital onlys was 26.7, 1883, which is going to be updated to a new an anthology series but set during the depression which kind of makes sense given the rustic vibe of the whole thing um but 26.7 we go over and look at the individual the trend they only put it out as a trend line for 30 days and 60 days but you think star trek discovery winding up their season it's sitting at 18.8 um these are all still outstanding the upper two and a half percent of all shows so Star Trek is not showing up in the top tens recently, but they're all in the upper two and a half percent of all shows. So maybe in the 20s, into the 30s. Um, now the demand over the trend line the month is down 18%. And the trend line is kind of down but flat, but it's still sitting at 99.4 the way they measure it. It's sitting at 99.4 as popular as any in the drama genre. So it's ahead of the pack. Now, Picard, with all the hoopla of the premiere coming up, Picard is still right now sitting at 15.2 on a 30-day trend line, uh, which is still outstanding. It's technically not as popular as Discovery, so there's that. But its surge over 30 days is up 24.1%. So its curve is doing this, even as, Picard's, as Discovery's is kind of down. Uh, but it's ahead. Is that making sense? 
Graphics are lousy without visuals, I know, I know. It's ahead of 94.8% of all the action-adventure genre, which is interesting. And just, just to put this in perspective, Prodigy is still sitting on a 30-day trend at 16.7 times more popular. So it's a point ahead of Picard even right now, and it's up 23% over the last 30 days and its trend line had been down a little bit it bal- you know ballowed out um, it's kind of amazing it's kind of it's kind of funky but all of these I'm not looking at lower decks here just cuz it's the oldest show but prodigy is still uncovering new audiences I think and people talking about it and then you've got the coming and going of discovery out the door and picard in the door So, you know, and again, these aren't actual eyeballs. This is basically the online buzz. So uh, that's your parrots. And I'm about to sneeze. (laughs) But it's okay because I'm probably so fuzzy you can't tell anyway. So I'm going to see. I'm scrolling back to the break. I'm really sorry, everybody. Um, I thought, I think in the recording we get the whole shamil. But for me here live, I'm only getting since the break. So my apologies. If you had a really awesome question you wanted to ask, please re-ask it now. Otherwise, we may just... um, That end of chat, Mark, may come a little sooner than we thought. We'll just see here. We will just see. (laughs) So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's me trying to have... Trying to transfer... um, We'll see what's happening here. Back to the surface. Thanks, everybody, though, for your concerns and trying to help. Melanie, can't wait for Picard. <clears throat> and Disco and Strange New Worlds. and more. Melanie, you just want it all. You just want it all. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, Rusty, you need to up your pledge for HD. You need to up up your pledge so I can buy a big neon sign. My timer alarm doesn't work. Or I'm so flustered with dealing with side crap today that I uh, I totally, totally, totally did not. I did not put on. I need to put a sign up here. Use Chrome Tuesdays, dummy. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, exactly, Glenn. Exactly. This makes total sense to me. Perfect sense to me. He said that he's in that art department list twice. Yeah. Well, Mike Okuda is in there twice, but he's got a different a different line. Uh, but there you go, Cairo. You're paying attention, as I know you are. Uh, okay. Well, I'm glad we could help out there, Melanie. We'll be on Life Support Live Sunday right after your church. Yes. Uh, sorry, Glenn. We're going to do, we're going to say if it's going to be a relief, it might as well be a relief a different day. So, uh, hey, Sarge, it's good to see you, Andrew. Good deal. Yep. Yes. Having Cryptic Studios, the makers of Star Trek Online, in the list with Hector and Thomas. Blow your mind as far as the implications for that, for what's happening. Yeah, blow your mind. You thought it was big enough that we got the Titan into Lower Decks? Picard says, hold my beer. Yeah. Okay, Glenn. Glenn, you're saying that Stranger Worlds will top the digital parrots within two weeks of its reduction. From your lips to the great bird's ears. We'll see what happens there. Uh, Texture (laughs) trivia. Actually, Christoph, Chrome only froze because I went into it and came out. And it was competing with two cameras at once. So, yes, stolen within 30 seconds of me realizing I'd left it somewhere because people standing around. Um, <laughs> well, Tobias, you'd be surprised. No, I'm complaining. I'm complaining. I don't like putting out something. Because when you put it, when you're making it for the archives on YouTube, the YouTube snark, they don't care what it happened. They don't care about a live community feeling. They just want the thing in them. And I don't blame them. 
So if you're trying to build a network on YouTube, having fuzzy video for the unaware latecomer who doesn't know they're even a latecomer, they just know they're watching on YouTube, it's not a good idea. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I appreciate that, Narda. <laughs> a little blurry is better than no Larry. Um, yes, yes, yes. Uh, but what I said, it's no good. It's not good for gaining new new voices, new faces on YouTube, new numbers. Maybe Doug's not cloned, but his parrot has been hired to Beaky. Is that his parrot's name? Beaky, Binky. Uh, yeah. I guess maybe we should have the parrot analytics in to check on this. Uh, you guys are all too kind. You're all too kind. <laughs> Blurry with a touch of texture. Okay, please, no trivia. Well, sometimes it's both, Zahir. Sometimes it's both. Um, yeah, the days of the plastic over the air vents and my innards overheated for the laggy latency, that's gone. That's not been an issue. Oh, Zahir, which characters do I think will show up on Picard? Well, you know, I kind of, you know, it's only because of the way they danced around it a little bit. But uh, you got the idea that maybe, maybe Jordy, maybe Lavar, because of what Lavar was saying or not saying. I mean, we're all expecting for, you know, I know. Um, our friend Rebecca would say uh, Picard needs Beverly. Um, don't know about Gates and or... Of course, we're all wondering and watching and waiting for Worf too. So I don't know, or much less the the uh, other cast or the other twenty fourth now twenty fifth century denizens from the other series who could turn up. Uh, you know, get out of the box. They're all living in that time. They're not tied down to the as we've seen, right? Um, oh, what is this now? The who's who of production is outstanding, but you're hoop happy because it's just more Star Trek. Even if there are things you don't like, there are always elements you do like. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, this is true, Cairo. The cruise has an exhibit with the Strange New World uniforms. Hey, they're paying that much. They should get a sneak peek instead of waiting for, what, July and Comic-Con? Yeah, because the show will be on and off by then. So why not tease it a little bit? Hoping it'll be in Chicago as well and maybe a pilot episode showing. Well, that'd be awesome. It would be a month early. It would be a month early. Or if nothing else, maybe an extended teaser or an extended act. We'll see. Uh, yes, yes, yes. In fact, Dave had a little punny tweet. He came back and said, uh, if you have some questions, he said, sorry to be a little capital C cryptic with that post. I'll try to explain later this week. So he's waiting to uh, let the show drop before anybody says anything more. Um, Rose, if I can tell you about the Zoom, how that would work. We don't, I'm not Zooming here, putting it over Zoom. It's just on the live stream channels. Uh, hey, Sophia, hello. Hope everything is fine in Portugal. Um, what you would give for the first up of SNW right now? Well, yeah, a lot of us would too. But all in good time, my dear. All in good time. It'll get here. Uh, people will complain for everything, yes. Um, it's kind of insane, isn't it? It's somewhere between the uh, production delay of Discovery and just the pandemic. But they're going to overlap three episodes here, and then Picard's finale will overlap the Strange New Worlds premiere, which is insane. If Picard does not end with a whimper and people are bubbling about that, it's going to be the, yeah, that first weekend of May, that first week of May, the weekend is just going to be insane in the membrane for Trek, uh, the online world. Um, <laughs> do you have some ideas, Nathaniel? Can you cram something through the, the digiwebs? Uh, yep, Beaky. Yep, yep. That's Doug's parrot. What a name, huh? What a name. Uh, oh, there you go, Christoph. SNW will be on Parrot's Top 10 because you'll complain like hell if you can't see it. But your complaints will only count for the parrots of your countries. 
unless you write to all your American friends, if you if you RT back and forth with them, that'll help gin up the number over here. I take it. Uh, let's see. Didn't Michael suggest that Sid might be brought back would make sense with the 2024 tie-in? I'm I'm missing your flow there. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, thank you. Michael Shabon, that is. Okay. Who's still on the staff and I think is contributing a script. Yes. Um, their names aren't popping up on IMDb, but that doesn't mean anything. Well, you know, IMDb only follows the credited, the visually credited people. So all those folks, especially, my God, the construction guys, they never got a, never got a name, never got a dinner. Uh, this is one. Hi, this, is this is one question. Certainly, Glenn. Uh, the Q and Guy and interaction. Well, hope hopefully we'll get there. Uh, hey, Robin. When will there be any Kelvin news, like the writers and director? Uh, that's out. That's out. It's the uh, the director of I've gone blank on his name. It's the director of uh, Wandavision and other things. And there's there's a writing team who's rewriting the original writing team that was one of the writing teams that was announced recently. The not writing team from from Kurtzman era, the writing team that JJ and the movie side put together that were both women. There are two men who are two men are rewriting the two women, and I don't have their name. I'm, they're not household names enough for to have them up here. Uh, and somebody's probably going to pop them in anyway. But it's it's out there. It's very much known. That's known. That's known. Uh, unless they really rush Kelvin forward, they're going to have to move that. They can't start shooting in November, December and have a modern blockbuster movie done in 13 months. And if it is, it'll, it'll have shortcuts and it'll harm the overall quality at the end. I'm sorry. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And the animated film has been talked about. The head, some of the top dogs in feature film at the new reconstituted, remarried CBS Viacom Paramount uh, are on record as talking about maybe a prodigy film on the model of what the SpongeBob movie did for the series. It bolstered the TV ratings for new new eyeballs and audiences, much less new generations. So I think we are thank thankfully at the end of the chat. So, everybody, I'm going to uh, analyze this video and see how bad it is. And we'll see. I may just record. I was so proud of this message this week. Um, I may just record, and it's so obvious what it is. I may record it, re-record it just for YouTube. But, but here we are, and I'm sorry about losing your early chat. That didn't flip over the way it did last time. Uh, what are you saying here, Cairo? In Picard's 2024, I guess they will not talk about that war in Europe two years ago, which may instantly date it when they filmed it. Could be. Could be. Could be. Hey, Alfredo. Hello. I hope everything is well in Mexico City. Um, we're just leaving. We just got out. We just got out. Everybody... Um, Again, thanks for your patience. I'm going to be posting more and more things as video bits and, and short bits. Uh, feel free to go in and vote if you're on the news list and you didn't get a chance to vote on the poll. Those numbers may change and tick up a little bit. We'll see what happens, okay? Otherwise, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks again to all of our Patreons and our live wires, our TTLers. And uh, thank you, Gay, for being our newest Patreon. Yay. Uh, if you want to jump in on that, you know that it is, uh, it's very simply patreon.com slash Trekland Live. It bills out once a month. Of the, I have a 5 and a $10 tier. It's very simple. I don't try to blow that up. But hey, I hope you can join us on the Trek Files this week. We've got, I have some little Trek Files news to share with you next week, I think. We'll have all the bugs worked out. Um, that's awesome. Check out uh, Talking About the generation gap in viewers in 1971 for Star Trek. Yeah, we had a lot of fun with that one. Also, again, the news, if you're just joining us, our weekly Life Support Live session is ending March 19th. 
Uh, you want to be there for the big two-hour finale. Well, two hours is a regular show, but we'll be live together and we'll be part of Virtual TrekCon 3, which is no different. You don't access it any differently, but we'll have a lot of new eyeballs with this just for the, fir for the uh, first time, hopefully. And that this week, this week, we will be on Sunday at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, 8 European. 10 Central Europe or 9 Central Europe. Okay. Big difference. Hope you all hope nobody is jumping in there. It's on the page. You can still like and subscribe because even though we're ending the weekly show, Life Support Live ain't going anywhere. The page will be there. The Discord will be there. And we will be doing occasional specials and live panels, which I can't wait to do. Finally, that's the news from Life Support Live Land with the two doctors. Everybody, once again, hey, it's Larry Nemechek on Twitter. Love to have you there. Twitter was kind of a thread this the last couple of days. It's been kind of fun there with April's character admiral. Uh, but it's Larry Nemechek's track line for everything else. And of course, portal47.net if you want to deep dive with us all month long, all year long. All righty. Everybody, once again, stay healthy out there. Do all the things. Stay woke. Check your sources. And then if they're dependable, maybe listen to what they have to say. Um, and truck well, everybody. <laughs>